Hello. Hey. Let's try that again. Hello. Um, okay. Thanks for joining our session. So today, Andrew and I will be talking about conversational AI. Um, so first, I guess it would make sense to introduce ourselves and explain why we are in the position of <laughs> talking about it. Um, so my name is Ilya. Um, I'm a product lead uh, at Google. And um, um, I kind of like doing uh, two things there. So one is, um, so I joined Google about a year and a half ago when uh, my company was acquired. Uh, company name is API AI, and we renamed it to Dialogflow. So Dialogflow is a platform for building uh, conversational interfaces uh, for uh, Google Assistant and also other platforms. So uh, our users are building like Assistant apps, Facebook bots, Slack bots, um, like, and like conversational agents for other platforms. And also I'm in charge for um, startup ecosystem development uh, with Google Assistant. So basically um, working with startups that are building interesting um, applications for uh, conversational, um, conversational like use cases. Andrew? Hi, my name is Andrew McCraith. I'm responsible for corporate development at Conversica. Conversica is the global leader in conversational AI for business. And we face a great problem, which is that we're growing very fast. And my role is to help us make sure that as we grow and expand, uh, we don't get ahead of ourselves and we do it successfully. And one of the, the biggest challenges as we grow is recognizing that the new segments we get into, whether they're new business functions, new geographies, uh, new cultures and languages, that we understand the nuances of those different opportunities. And, and that's key to the success of conversational AI is recognizing that not every conversation is the same. And we need to have one solution that can recognize those differences, put that all in context, and still have a very successful conversation. So now that we know what conversational AI is and why we're the experts to speak to you about it, uh, one of the real benefits of conversational AI is that it can take over doing the non-value add, very repetitive uh, aspects of a conversation. So 30% of business uh, people spend their time in email, and a large portion of that is doing repetitive tasks like scheduling a meeting, following up with someone. And so conversational AI can help you address those issues and actually make you more productive in your job. So Ilya, on the, the side that you're involved with, where do you see the benefits of conversational AI? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I guess, well, we are kind of like um, looking at conversational AI from different angles a little bit, right? So uh, my main focus is from consumers. And um, the way we think about conversational AI is that, well, there are two things. There, are, there is the conversational and the AI here, yeah. right? And um, so uh, there is an AI that helps you manage conversation. Um, so basically understanding user intent, managing dialogue, um, uh, like generating like personalized answers and things like this. And then there is the AI part, which is more uh, of a like decision making and deciding like when to uh, when to like when is the best time to like to start this conversation, let's say, right? Um, so and, like our focus, um, especially in dialogue flow at Google, is uh, on the in interface part, right? So. We are basically considering it as a, an additional interface to existing like services. It's not about like just building like AI from scratch. It's rather if you have a great service, why not add a conversational interface to it? So speaking of um, benefits here, it's um, uh, so obviously it is the most natural way of communicating with people. Like uh, people are like talking to each other for like thousands and thousands of years. Um, and um, with the uh, like growth of the um, like uh, technological services, like number of those, and like noise around it, it kind of like is becoming really necessary to provide uh, people with like well easy interfaces to get things uh, like to get things done, and to be informed when they have to be informed, not, not to you know not, not to check your like Twitter and email and Facebook like every other minute. Um, and this is like a huge benefit. So basically, we are allowing people to uh, uh, 
uh, to um, kind of like get back, get their life back, and uh, focus on on important stuff. Um, but I guess like the angle may be a little different if it is uh, if we are talking about enterprise use cases. Um, so and like well, um, what I hear here and there is that uh, like actually people will start like losing jobs because of the AI. Um, because like well, many of the functions could be like replaced. So what's your take on it? Uh, and that is a common fear. AI is an automation technology. Automation it means jobs are going away. And what we found is it's actually quite the opposite. Uh, so Salesforce is one of our big partners, being a sales automation company, and they were worried about losing licenses because our customers would automate the sales process. And what they found out was, of all the companies they surveyed using Conversica, zero had reduced their number of Salesforce licenses. 80% had actually increased their Salesforce licenses. And the reason for that is we were taking away part of the process, but that enabled people to do what people do best, which was to sell, in the case of a sales assistant. And not only were we helping them spend their time selling, we were helping them generate even more leads. So they needed even more people to help. So what we're really seeing is a shift. Uh, there's maybe net positive jobs, but it's a shift from the cold calling, uh, inside sales type work, which is a high churn position, uh, it's not what people do best, to the more value add uh, sales executive account selling type roles. Uh, and that's what we expect to continue to see happening as we look at conversational AI, is all those uh, business conversations that happen, whether they're between companies and their customers, companies and their employees, uh, companies and their suppliers, those conversations will be automated. Uh, and that's kind of where conversational AI is going, is continuing to enable more and more of those business interactions to be automated. Uh, and that's gonna open up all sorts of new uh, ways of doing business, ways of relating with your employees uh, and your suppliers. Uh, and also seeing how all those different assistants uh, work together. What, what are some of the places where you see the future of conversational AI uh, as these ecosystems continue to grow? Um, well, I think um, one of the, like there, there may, may be uh, multiple paths uh, to the future of conversational AI. Like at the end of the day, obviously, like on consumer side, uh, we will all have um, assistants that help us. So the question is like, what form will they be? Um, so would it be, you know, like my personal assistant that cares about my needs, that knows me uh, best and like, well, and tries to like um, anticipate what needs I may have and like, well, um, is able to answer any questions or it could be, you know, like brand assistants where you are basically talking to each and every like brand uh, separately, for example. Or, I mean, pro my view is like, well, probably it will be like a uh, combination, right? Um, but in, in general, in general, um, again, like because we are considering uh, conversational UX as just part of, like as an addition to existing services, well, we are adding this layer that knows you, that understands what you want, uh, that is like much more natural. So, and the future is basically like, well, this assistance becoming like, well, getting to a quality level where you basically do not need, like, not like, well, you may need uh, other types of interfaces, but for most of your like daily tasks, if you just think uh, of um, like a real human assistant, they have to be like same capable. Right, so I mean, obviously, they you will not you know like draw draw uh, like some paintings with uh, with uh, like a conversational assistant, but for any routine tasks, well, I believe that is um, that's definitely like well what will be uh, uh, will be happening. So, wh what do you think of like the enterprise picture for it? Yeah, so. Enterprise is a, a fascinating place because it has a different set of challenges. Uh, and, and the two big ones that stand out are, you know, we're trying to reach out and engage the, the target. Uh, the target hasn't necessarily started that conversation. We're asking the question. 
And that's a different challenge from a technology standpoint. You need to know what's the right question to ask, when's the right time to ask it, and what's the best way to ask it. Uh, and that's different for each person you're trying to reach. So as we continue to get better and better with the technology, we can start to make that a much more uh, personalized assistant. So right now, most enterprises, they think of having an assistant for each one of their salespeople. And we see the future as we can have an assistant for each one of our customers, or for each one of our employees, or each one of our suppliers, because they each interact and engage in a different way. Uh, and that's one of the challenges, is how do you uh, build into your uh, system a way to recognize all those different subtleties. So the way an executive interacts is different maybe than an entry level position. Uh, maybe there's a different dialect in different parts of the country. Maybe someone prefers to engage with a female assistant or a male assistant. Do they want someone who's very um, stern and aggressive in their style or very laid back and relaxed? And so all those different nuances and different personalities uh, takes time to build up a data set uh, that can be very precise. Um, and then the other part is to get the most out of an assistant, whether it's for business, consumer, and any application, you need to integrate with systems. The more systems you integrate with, the more valuable data you can bring to the conversation, both to contextualize it, uh, but also to make it beneficial in both directions. A lot of our business conversations, people share information that's really valuable, but we don't have a place to store it today. Uh, being able to integrate with more and more systems will help that become a richer, more valuable experience. Uh, and it also accelerates the time to payback. So as an enterprise, return on investment is very important. And the faster we can deploy, and the easier we can deploy, and the more systems we integrate with, the higher those returns and the faster you get a return. So on the, uh, on the other side, what are some of the challenges that you see as we try and get to this uh, next generation of conversational AI? Um, well, I, I agree on the uh, like integration piece. Um, in, uh, in, like, in our world, integration is basically like uh, access to all the, uh, to, to, to the services. And um, obviously, uh, well, one of the roles of, uh, uh, of uh, speaking assistants, digital assistants, is actually being like a gateway to all types of different services. So it's not just about integrating it, it's about mainly like orchestrating services, understanding like which service to like to contact for uh, each type of request and like user personality. So you may have like different preferences in terms of, you know, your travel providers, for example, or um, um, so depending on your personality and depending on uh, uh, on the type of uh, type of request, uh, you may need to connect to like two different systems, right? So basically, yeah, like this, like integration is extremely important. In order to get to integration, you actually have to convince um, like uh, brands and like and services and like companies to uh, to play this game, to join the ecosystem, which they are doing. But then the question is always um, a balance like chicken and egg issue where um, kind of like they they are much more motivated to build very meaningful, uh, meaningful experiences if the audience is there and audience is re like requesting it. But um, you cannot get this demand from uh, from consumers uh, if you do not have um, like enough services connected and like well if you do not have this uh, uh, like uh, if you do not get really high quality of the responses, right? So it's an interesting balance where you kind of like have to set. Uh, expectations for consumers and you are trying to kind of like well achieve the coverage and uh, ex like many of the uh, uh, companies that are building inter uh, like conversation interfaces they have first to just imagine what the conversations will, will be about they do not have any data yet as they like haven't launched yet so that is like an interesting uh, like challenge um, and uh, something that uh, is to be like solved to get to uh, like really like widespread um, conversational AI um, applications. Um, but that's also like pretty, pretty interesting and uh, I guess um, uh, it's, uh, it kind of like, well, helps us 
well, uh, we, we are working hard on actually on, on, on bringing it, right? Um, so what do you think of like of the of the opportunities there? So like, well, so what sh what should be done to uh, to like to make it to, to get to that future? Yeah. So uh, this room is filled with entrepreneurs, uh, investors supporting entrepreneurs, and we all know that where any great challenge lies, that's really an opportunity for someone to take advantage of it. And conversational AI is ripe for that. There's a lot of places where uh, innovation still needs to happen. Uh, so making uh, the integration problem, making that easier is one place. The other place that uh, is very exciting to both of us is as these uh, AIs uh, become more pervasive, they're gonna enable new use cases that we don't have today. And recognizing those use cases uh, and the new opportunities uh, is an area where uh, the people who can identify that and take advantage of it will be able to create uh, great amounts of value. Uh, and I think we're just at the, be the beginning of that. So if we look on the business side, a lot of the penetration has been in sales. It's very easy to talk about if we can help you convert more leads into revenue, you know, pay us to help you do that. But it doesn't just stop there. Uh, we can do the same thing engaging employees to make employee experiences better at the company, working with our suppliers, working with investors. And so at the end of the day, really the opportunity is for everyone here, how can I take advantage of conversational AI? So if you're at a startup and you're trying to grow and expand, maybe you don't need to hire 10 or 20 salespeople. Uh, you can augment that with an AI-powered sales assistant. Let them do a lot of that pre-sales grunt work. If you're an investor, you know the most common use for Series B and Series C funds is to scale sales and marketing. So bring this technology to your portfolio. Um, if you're a corporation and you're looking at digital transformation, where are those repetitive processes where you can apply a, a sales assistant or an AI-powered assistant to help you? Uh, what are some of your other thoughts on key takeaways going forward? Um, no, for the startups here, I guess, like uh, today we have this unique opportunity where there is a new ecosystem that is growing the conversational like, U, uh, like UX market. Um, like, I mean, we, we, we had this with like web in 90s and then like with mobile apps in uh, 2000s. And basically, like most of the stakeholders are here already. So uh, the technology companies are investing huge amount of like resources and money in uh, building hardware, providing tools um, to make it happen. Uh, brands recognize that it is very important as well. So they, they are coming there. Startups are still not there. So we are still to see some like breakthrough cases as in like, you know, Angry Birds for mobile or like Pokemon Go for, for AI, uh, AR. So um, I, I kind of like want to invite all the startups here to think like how they can like come up with great new experiences for a conversational market. If you have any questions immediately following this session, come join us over in the Slush Cafe and we'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, as long as you have questions, we'll give you answers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.